people. Right. Hi guys, welcome back. Just got this through the post, some filament. I'm going to try some flexible filament out. This one's by XYD. I'll leave the link in the description below where I bought it. There's a website if anyone's interested. www.3dxyd.com uh, Let's have a look. There's the box. Nothing else on the box really. States States 1.75mm Flexi-1 1.75mm. This one's in white. And that's it really. There's the manufacturer. I'm in China. There's some numbers. Let's have a look inside. Comes in a nice shiny mylar bag. Clear on one side. And that's, that's it really. Some desk in the middle. Vacuum sealed. Some information on the side. There's no temperature rating and I'm a bit disappointed unless it's on the other side. I'll have a look when I open it. But I expected some information inside. There may be something inside, I don't know, but we'll, we'll have a look at that. So we're going to go over the printer and print a few things out with this and see what it's like. Uh, also, I've got some standard PLA. This one's unbranded. I want to give it a try, let you let you know guys know whether it's any good. White again, uh, just PLA 1.75. Nothing else in the box, just unbranded. But if it's any good, I will. I'll let you know whether it's any good. The temperatures a little sticker 180 to 220, uh, and diameter on there. Easy C spool. I want to give these two. Uh, a try. I'm mainly interested in the flexible filament, but we'll have, we'll have a go and then we'll just print a few things out. So, back shortly. Okay, guys, we've got the first print of this uh, flexi filament. It seems to be going okay. I've got it running quite slow 20 millimeters a second. Uh, and I've got the temperature set at 229, bed temperature 40. I don't think I need the bed temperature. Yeah, it's just warm, just look warm. Uh, so, yeah, it seems okay. It's only the first part of the print. I'm doing a phone case. But all I've done basically is put the filament in and, and run it. And there's some little strings it's not that it's elastic key quite elastic key quite strong Ugh. it's quite strong actually that is actually 0.2 millimeter and it's quite strong so it's quite elastic key I'm hoping that's gonna work okay I've just upgraded to the latest version of Cura so I forgot to put my mesh bed settings in so I had to put that back in but it looks okay. Zoom in a little bit for you. Looking pretty sweet. I'm hoping that it's all gonna go well. The mod I done which I'll show you uh, I'll put up in the top so if you want to watch the mod I done for the Bowden system at the top I'll leave a link a little, a little description now I'll play the video now actually just so you can watch that and I'll come back to this. Hey guys, uh, we're about 12, 15 minutes into the print. Just thought I'd try and show you the the filament as it's gone through the the, the motor. It's very difficult for you. you can just to see a little bit, but there's been no kinks. There's no binding up. It seems to be working okay. So that little mod I've done seems to be working for now. I bumped it up to uh, 22 millimeters a second is it 22 millimeters a minute I don't know what it is I'll have to check on that but I think it's 22 millimeters a minute isn't it uh, so yeah it seems to be working okay I'm just shining a torch in there so you, a flashlight so you can see 
what it's doing. And it seems to be working okay. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with things so far. I'm going to slowly ramp the speed up so I can get up to maybe 30. It's difficult to see, but there's no binding at all there. I don't think you're going to catch it on the camera, but I'll try to move it over a little bit. Hopefully, you can see the white filament just there going in, and it seems to be great. I mean, I actually pushed it. I pushed it by hand all the way when I when I disconnected this lock. I pushed it by hand all the way through from from uh, from this end here. I just pushed it through. So yeah, this uh, Capricorn tubing, this blue Capricorn tubing seems to be the definitely helping out, guys. Okay, so what I'll do is be back shortly, and we'll have a look at the printer. We're only ten minutes in, so I'll come back in about. 15 20 minutes and have a look, see if there's any problems. Back shortly. Right. Okay, so you've got yourself some PTFA. Do whether it's the white stuff or this blue stuff. This blue stuff's the best. You need some way of cutting it. That's the bit I'm using. What I've used is one of these cutters, which I used for DIY for cutting plastic trim and Anything like that. This is actually great because you've got your angles, you can just put your angles on and you, you can literally just slice whatever you want off at a perfect angle. See that? There's no effort at all, there's no stressing the part, there's just a blade. So get yourself one of them is really handy and you get a perfect cut each time. I didn't see that. So when you get one of these uh, couplers, now this one, uh, it was quite small so I had to drill it out so I went up in stages. Have a look inside to see where the spring is a little like a spring a clip. So when the bound shoe comes through it stops it from coming back so it's a one way like it grabs all of it and then when you push this black part down it opens the springs inside. Little tin springs. So you don't actually don't want to screw them out so you want to get the right gap. Now this uh, step cutter this one is actually is a four millimeters just measure the round tube so I've just done this by hand in fact what I've done is got some grips more grips or anything you want just to hold it that just locks on to hold it and I just went by hand because sunny brass and just eventually you can see pops into there like that perfect this is quite snug fit and as it goes down to the first uh, stage under the before it goes to number five Puts a nice little chamfer on. Blow the little bits of brass out. And then just feed it in. It's so slippy this stuff. It's really difficult to get hold of. And it's pretty much the right size. There you go. And that, basically that's it. So instead of printing out one of these. The thing which is in thingy bears. Another little plastic guide. So it guides the filament for your flexi filament. Just try this. This works for me anyway. Uh, and also what, even if it do, it's no good you can use it for just actually getting your filament in so when your filament comes over to the, the wheel it's easier to find it into there than try to get it into this one because it always hits the corner and gets jammed in but this you can guide it in a bit more and you could even if you didn't use it for that you could actually chamfer one end a little bit to make it uh, countersink one end of the PDFA and then your tube, sorry, your filament will go in a lot easier. So you've got two options really. So that's a, that's a better option. So guys, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the next bit. And I'll catch you in a moment. Okay guys, back again. We are 50% into the print. It's all going well. I've bumped the speed up to uh, 80%. So that's about 22 millimeters a minute now it looks like there's a lot of stringing going on but that's because I've turned off retractions so there's no retractions at all I'm going to figure out how to keep the movement in uh, in the print but this is not a problem really it's just it's not causing any problems anyway it's just dropping down but it's looking really good so far uh, so we about halfway, just over halfway, 
about 60-70% into the print. It's all looking good. I'll zoom in for you a little bit. Looking pretty nice. I'm really happy with it. There's no problems with the bowden system yet. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll pop back shortly when the print's finished. Right guys, that's the end of the print for the first print for this flexi filament. There it is there. So I'll show you it. A lot of stringing, but that's to be expected because I turned off retractions. But the print itself looks okay. I'm trying to get the light so you can see. So I've got a very crappy light in here. Uh, yeah, I mean, this will all come off, no bother. Will it come off the build plate? Obviously, it's flexible, so it worn. There you go. Fantastic. No problem. Just before I move on, I wanted to just talk about this. Now, we've been printing on this. This surface was like a build tack copy of a build tack type surface, which is good, works great, but you have to be very careful that you don't damage or melt into into that surface. I've gone back to using a uh, builder's tape on this plate, this uh, spring steel plate, which as you can see is very flexible. Yeah, and it's fantastic. I've I've probably printed. 25 to 30 prints on this surface and do you know what I've never sprayed anything on you no glues nothing it, Everything pops off uh, The only thing I might do is if I touch it like this I'll wipe it with a bit of uh, alcohol to clean it uh, But there's no damage to the to the surface so th to me this is the perfect surface to use it grips like like it's supposed to it flexes, it comes off, it doesn't affect it and I can keep that surface if I wanted to do something which this was struggled with but I don't think there's any problems at all anyhow enough of that let's have a look at this print so strings I mean it's flexible enough as you can see yeah just pull off weird if I can get this string and stopped I think it'll it'll be a million times better <laughs> I did try to minimize the tool paths but I need to get some cutters to move my cup of tea so it doesn't fall into there uh, the phone I'm using is this one here this uh, motor Moto G5 Plus. Just see if it fits in without taking all the. There you go. Obviously, it's got all the strings on, but once I pull all that off, it'll go in alright. I think that'll work. I don't think there's any problems at all there. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to stop the video, I'm going to pull all these strings off, and then I'll. I'll pop back to show you the final result. Okay guys, back again. There's the final thing, done. It took us about five minutes to just pull all the, the raggy bits off, but it seems to be working okay, looks all right. It's slightly too small in the dimensions for the top. Uh, doesn't actually curl around this top edge a little bit. And I suspect that's because Mine, this phone is the Moto 5 uh, GP5 Plus. So, the, so the, the one without the Plus is a little bit different, I think. Uh, but all the parts work, the access to the camera and the mic, everything's there. You can turn it on and off, or you can you can still get the fingerprint scanner, which is not a problem. So yeah, it's it's all good. Happy with that for the first print. What I'm going to do now is I've got a, a, a ball to print out in the white rubber for the dog, like a bouncy, like a them hollow balls with the holes in. I'm going to print that out, and then we'll we'll see what that's like. It's really flexible, actually. If I just take it off, I mean, 
I didn't expect it to be that flexible because when I pushed it through the, the filament, uh, through the, the PTFE lines, it, it wasn't massively, I didn't expect, I expected it to be really rubbery and bouncy and not being able to push through the lines, but it went through okay and I thought, oh, this should print quite nice. But when it's printed, it seems, I prefer if it was a bit less flexible than this. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not going to break anyway if you make a ball or something, or something like rubber feet. So this this will this will do uh, quite good for anything where you need a rubber handle, uh, some feet, like a grip, something like a grip. It feels quite grippy. It doesn't feel 100% rubbery, but it's in between. Uh, feels like that. And it's quite stretchy as well. No, it isn't actually. Yeah. It's not stretchy that way. Like I say, it's, yeah, it's not stretchy, but it's flexible, so I suppose that's what you want to keep it shape, but uh, be allowed to move. Now, single filaments are cut off. There's some single filaments there. They're just where the tool path, where the tool went. That, I would say that's flexible, like a rubber band. Actually quite strong, this thing. Ugh. Really strong. Okay, guys, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a ball out and then I'm not going to show you printing it out. I don't think so, anyway. I'll just show you the final result and I'll do a uh, uh, just to see out whether it's worth buying. Uh, and I'll catch you later. Okay, guys, so uh, I'm in Cura. I've just downloaded the latest version. This one is, I don't know what version this is, it's 1.34.1. So I've just downloaded this and I've had to tweak it a little bit. I'm not sure whether I like it yet, but I've got the new version. So I'm going to print this ball out. In fact, this ball's printing out as we speak. Uh, I just thought I'd show you what I'm printing out next. Uh, settings are all the same. Uh, just the, they've made it like slightly different, but it's still the same. This is all different along the top. Anyhow, I found a website for the the flexi filament so i'm going to jump over to there which is here xyd made in china so this is the filament which i'm using it comes on a roll like this i've got the one kilo version so this is the flexi down here it tells you a little bit about uh it's a thermoplastic and elastic rubber wire rod becomes softened under certain temperatures remains so at the same at room temperature it's a range of hardnesses is large i'm not going to read it all but yeah it goes in under 35 degrees below zero can still hold its own it's good for water resistance good for oil it says that uh xyd flex consumable is an environmental product a production material of re renewable utilization it has gotten rated certification from organization of international green environmental protection material so it says it's good for the planet whether it is or not i don't know some demonstrations there some little pictures of things and then it comes down to here so it's got some specs as well i was looking for now this is a bit confusing because when i went into when i found this i thought oh 240. now i've got a PTFE liner in me hot end and I'm putting a 225 or 226 or something so I immediately went over and knocked up to 230 uh, I'm struggling any more than that uh, possibly 235 I might have went to but then when I went um, this is a take it I take this is for this this filament but when I go down further down it's still it's still the flexi filament. Then I get another list of all the different uh, materials. So you've got like ABS, flame retardant ABS, hips flex, max wood, blah blah blah. Now there's the flex what I'm using. It has a specific gravity at the bottom. It's got one nine five to two four five. So now I'm a bit confused now uh, whether this is right. Oh, that's right. This just says production something. In fact, let's have a look. Yeah, it says uh, supplies product parameter. 
which I've just checked on my phone. I thought that might have said something else. But yeah, uh, that's just telling you what the product is. So it's a bit confusing. I don't know if anybody's got any any info on this or what is the right temperature of this. If anybody's used this before, I would be grateful if it could drop us a line because I'm printing that 230 at the moment. Uh, so I'm still well within the range. And I've also bumped the speed up as well. So I just thought I'd show you this, guys. So this is the website. Uh, if anybody's interested. And what I'll do, uh, I'll show you the final part uh, to conclude this video is going to be the rubber ball I'm printing out. It's quite stringy. I need some way of uh, stopping the stringing. I'm going to try retract very slowly to see if I can minimize it. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I'll just have to try and find a way of moving the tool uh, without going through midair. So I don't know. But we'll, I'll, I'll finish this print off. I'll show you that and that'll probably conclude this. I'll be back shortly. Okay, this is the second print I'm doing. It's about three quarters away done. A little ball. I think you're doing it okay. Quite a bit of stringing, as you can see. All the holes are filled in. Uh, I think they'll come out easy enough, but it's probably just as easy to print a solid ball. And if you look on the inside, I can zoom in a bit. Anyway, it's still not right. So I'll wait till the print's finished, and then I'll take it to the bench and we'll have a look at that. Okay. Okay, that's the print finished. That is that. That's the second print. This is going to conclude this video. So, how did it turn out? Not bad, it did a good job actually, uh, as you can see, it's a flexi. It didn't turn out perfect though, what happened is it's got loads of stringing, uh, I was ain't bothered about, but what happened further down on three quarters of the way up, it looks like it's under extruded, and I think it's under extruded because of the temperature. Now initially I set it to 225, uh, 125, 125, is that right? It doesn't seem right there. 125. Do you know what? I can't remember the temperatures. Let me just check. I'm just going to open up. Just going to open up back here just to check. Anyway, uh, two, yeah, yeah, 200, oh sorry, 225. 225 to 222 so this was like sort of lower temperature and that's what I started at but then when I went on the website and I found out it was higher temperatures I bumped it straight over to 235 uh, so I was a bit worried about me uh, my hot end the PDF tube inside that but it seemed to have managed and then the rest of it from there is great you can see it's just like a rubber ball it's all worked out okay so I'll cover that down I don't need it because because that's damaged and there's a little bit of damage here what I'm going to do as a little experiment I'm going to get me 3d pen with some of this flexi filament I'm going to fill in all of these little holes I'm going to see if I can because the strings there and I don't want to take the string off and I think the ball's quite weak I don't think it'll last up for the dog the dog will just rip that to shreds I thought it was actually I thought these parts were stronger, like thicker, but they weren't. So I'm going to fill this in with uh, rubber, get all this filled in all the way, and then I want to see what that's like. Uh, and I might report back on it or not. So, as final conclusion, uh, what's the final conclusion of this uh, flexi filament? To be honest, I'm really pleased about it. I needed something that because obviously PLA, brittle, ABS, difficult to print. Uh, 
I've got what else have I got? I've got uh, to you. I've got. Uh, I can't know. I'm using at the moment. I have to look in there. I have to remember. I've got some PETG. In fact, there's some. There's some PETG. And you can see. This PETG is flexible. Like the stuff you get in water bottles. Oh, that's just the lid. It doesn't crack. That's just the lid come off. But you can see. That's quite flexible in there. But it's also rigid as well. It's weird materials like the lid is it's solid. But anyway, you've got flexibility on that. Uh, uh, so yeah, I would definitely buy it. Again, in fact, I'm going to actually purchase some more. This is what I bought, so it's a, it wasn't given to me. Uh, and I've got a few projects where I need to print out some rubber part for feet uh, for rubber dampeners and, and things like that so it's just having that extra little bit of uh, material where you can actually do things like that and I'm also going to try and experiment with stopping the print half open print in like PETG maybe and see whether this flexi will actually bond to the, to the other plastic the PETG so if I could like say for instance I could stop the print and then print some rubber sealing inside rather than actually print it separate. I'm going to try that. It might work, I might not. Okay, I'll try it. But yeah, uh, this is thumbs up guys for this for this stuff. Uh, seems good quality. The print, once I've got the temperature, in fact I might even try a metal, all, all metal hot end and see whether I can get it to flow a little bit better. Uh, but yeah. Definitely needs a temperature up a little bit for my opinion anyway. So yeah, happy with that. Uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, I appreciate it if you if you drop the subscription uh, and keep tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.